My name is Michael Ladin. I am currently traveling more than 220,000 miles around the world on board my 2002 Storton Stevenson Overland Expedition Rig and KTM Adventure Bike. This is my story. Whoa, that was one long week. First off, I want to apologize to everybody. It has been a while since I've been here on YouTube. And I did promise to bring to you guys the entire build process of my new Expedition Rig. And I had originally intended to do that while I was building it. Well, I quickly determined that that was not going to be uh, at all possible. Um, my time frame to get the truck done was on a very short window. As it turned out, um, I basically had about three and a half months uh, to build the entire rig. And uh, it was a major undertaking. I'm not going to uh, sugarcoat it at all. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it to anybody to try to build something that quickly. Uh, and on top of that, I had outside um, helpers doing some of this uh, work, uh, particularly the fabrication of the box, which I did not have to do really on the last rig. And then, of course, sending the truck to paint. So that ate into that window of time. So once again, I apologize. It has been a long time. However, I did film the entire build and I am going to be bringing that to you guys now. Um, so this is basically technically the second in the series um, uh, of videos. And I hope, not gonna make any promises, but I do believe that you're gonna be getting one almost every week at this point uh, until I get this whole thing uh, wrapped up and out to you guys. As you can probably tell from my background, I am sitting in the truck right now. I am in beautiful uh, Southern Baja, California, Mexico. I've been down here now for about three weeks, which has given me time to start editing these videos. Uh, so that's uh, what's gonna bring it to you faster is I've actually got some time on my hands after really working uh, what amounted to be 18 hour days seven days a week getting this uh, truck done over the summer and then uh, setting out from New England and driving uh, first south to Virginia for Overland Expo East and then across the country in uh, a week to get to New Mexico for another uh, Overland Van Life event and then making my way down the thousand miles of the Baja Peninsula. So here we are and uh, today I'm going to show you basically uh, how I got the truck um, with the M1079 uh, Habitat box put on it. Uh, this is pre us fabricating the rest of the length of the box. Uh, and step one was really um, prepping the truck uh, for both for my metal fabricators and to um, uh, paint the underbody that I did myself and, and whatnot. So that's what you're going to see today. How did we get here? Well, Last video, which admittedly was a long time ago, I introduced you to the truck and kind of showed you how I got here. So let's roll that and get right into it. And I will hopefully see you all next week for another video. On last week's episode, my career in overlanding began primarily with Land Rovers. In fact, my first orange truck was a Land Rover Forward Control that I took throughout the Arctic Circle and various points in North America before deciding that it was a gas platform and I really looked for diesel. That's when I switched to this 1979 Mercedes Unimog. That, coupled with the Overland Expedition trailer I built, was my rig of choice until I switched to the 1994 Storton Stevenson. Traveling with that for about a year and a half, 
I now moved into the current truck, which is a 2002 store in Stevenson. And thus, the new story begins. are doing core 15 chassis blast. There's two reasons for that. One, we're demilitarizing, make it look something overland and not military. And two, it is an undercoating that protects against rust, and corrosion, and everything else. Been using it for years. Best product out there, PR 15. So basically going around and spraying anything that's tan. All right, so we've wrapped up the underbody paint. So the whole truck is now black with uh, POR 15 underneath. And like I said before, I think I mentioned that is mostly for rust proofing and obviously to demilitarize the thing so it doesn't look like an army truck anymore. Step two in the build is lights. And for those of you that have followed me for a long time, you know that uh, many years ago, my Unimod got hit from behind uh, on the highway um, so I've been kind of fanatical about making sure that the truck lights up nice and bright and the military lights are notoriously dim. So I'm replacing all of the lights on the truck everywhere with LED lights. These are new. We just put these on and I've got to install under here. We got, uh, I don't know how many marker lights are on this truck, but there's like maybe 30 of them. So that's what I'm going to work on right now. The other problem is with a military truck is you have all these different connections. And some of that's because it has like blackout lights and it has all sorts of different settings. I'm only concerned with the fact that it has brake lights, blinkers, tail lights, etc. So we have some extra little things that we're not going to really hook up. But so far, that's what's happening. That's step two. And then next up, we are going to work on getting the box ready for my welders and expanding. Uh, the back section here, which is the additional eight feet on the flatbed. All right, guys, it's demo day here today. You can see I'm inside the empty M1079 box. Stripping off uh, all the window uh, shades. I gotta get these uh, overhead LED lights out of here. Back here, there's some like boxes, blackout, power distribution panel, all that kind of stuff. 
Just try to get everything out of here. And then on the floor, you can see these are super heavy. Um, steel plates, basically, up and down, and they're here on the wall as well. Those uh, were for all the uh, common equipment that was installed in this box. So probably, I gotta guess it's over a thousand pounds of weight. So all that's coming out. And uh, that's what we're up to. So, so far, paint done. Exterior, exterior lighting, LEDs on the truck, and now working on prepping the box, ready to go to Atlas Metalworks to get some fab done. I want to give a huge shout out to all my Patreon supporters. And if you're interested in exclusive behind the scenes content, be sure to check me out on patreon.com. Thank you so much to all my build partners involved in Project Baobab. This would not have happened without you. And you'll be hearing a lot more about their products and services coming up in this series. for watching this video. If you like what we're doing, be sure to subscribe to our channel by clicking on the truck and tree symbol to your right. Once again, thanks and hope to see you soon.